Hello everyone, welcome to Road CC, where today's topic of conversation is winter gloves. Unless you're planning on sticking to indoor riding for the next five months, or you're a lot hardier than us, then a good set of gloves is going to be essential to making rides bearable and hopefully enjoyable even. I used to ride through the winter in no gloves. I still don't understand how I did it. No. Fighting no. back against the cold is gonna be a two-pronged attack. Firstly, your gloves need to keep potentially chilling factors out. So, basically wind and rain. And secondly, they need to prevent heat from escaping. And to do that, there's loads of different materials, styles and thicknesses which can make choosing your next set of gloves a little bit complicated. Now we're going to look at some of the main differences and then go through our top six picks that we've recently reviewed over on the Road CC website. Firstly, what sort of conditions are you going to be riding in as it makes a big difference to the type of gloves you're going to need. Gloves designed for deep winter tend to be bulky due to layers of insulation and heavy duty waterproof fabrics. Now thinner gloves offer more dexterity and finger mobility, but of course they do then compromise on the warmth side of things. Now, personally, I don't love riding in gloves. Um, so I've just got a thicker pair for when I really need them. And maybe I've got one pair for rainy rides. But I know lots of people that use a thin liner pair through most of the spring and autumn, and they can then be slipped inside a thick pair for ridiculously cold rides. Yeah, I need that. I'm literally always cold, as you know. Our first top pick is a full-fingered summer weight glove recommended for conditions between 8 and 15 degrees. When it's merely a little bit chilly out, lightweight or liner gloves will do the trick just fine, and it's amazing how much difference just covering your fingertips can actually make. Obviously, lightweight gloves do compromise on the protection they can offer, but will keep your fingers warmer than summer gloves in autumn or spring conditions. These Galibier Roubaix Vision gloves got high praise from Stu, who said they offer impressive spring and autumn performance and are high on quality and value for money. The Super Roubaix Lycra material has a mid-weight knit with a fleecy inner and thanks to the material having plenty of stretch, provided a close fit without them feeling overly tight or restricting blood flow. Even on Stu's fingers, which he reckons are on the stubby side, his words, oh, not nice. mine, the stretch meant that there was no void at the top of the fingers, which improves dexterity on the brake and shift levers. In many ways, they're similar to a set of the highly regarded Defeat Dura gloves, but offer better bang for your buck, even at the slightly increased price of 16 quid versus 14 when we tested them. The silicon pattern on the back adds to visibility when indicating and the silicon on the palms mean that they grip the bars excellently even in the wet. So being thin these do lack any padding but an excellent choice for spring and autumn months nonetheless. Our second pick are technically designed for mountain biking and hence got reviewed over on the off-road CC site. However, we found that they're great for us rock bar lovers too on chilly, albeit not freezing days. The 100% brisker glove has a soft shell backing that keeps the worst of the wind at bay. They're hard wearing and a single layer palm means that they're still a great feel of the bars. Tester Rachel said that at 27 quid, there's no reason not to have a pair for winter riding. The advantage of windproof gloves over fully waterproof ones is that they usually breathe a little bit better, keeping your hands from getting all clammy, and they're also less bulky than most waterproof gloves with a softer feel to boot. Now, our tester found that the brisker gloves were good down to zero degrees, as long as it stayed dry, of course, and loved the funky colours. But fear not, they are available in black for the less adventurous. Yeah, call me boring, but um, I kind of just black for me, I think. Uh, one thing that you should note is that the cuffs are quite short. So best paired with a jersey with sleeves on the long side. Although weirdly, the cuffs are longer on the women's version. Hmm. Uh, it is great that there's two different versions for men and women though. Uh, obviously hand shapes can vary. So different models means that they tend to fit better. The 100% briskers are a good choice if you ride mainly on cold but dry days and the naturally warm-handed will benefit from the impressive breathability. Thanks to the thinner material on the palm, they give better feel on the brakes than many road-orientated winter gloves. Going back to the cuffs for a minute, I absolutely hate having a draft in between my sleeves and gloves. 
but overlapping them isn't always the most comfortable. Uh, those full winter gloves generally have long cuffs to make sure that there's no gap between the glove and the jersey, but have a think about how well these are gonna work with the tops you're likely to be wearing. Ideally, they'll be generous enough to fit over snug-fitting jersey sleeves, but sufficiently low profile to tuck neatly inside jacket sleeves. And once your hands are nice and toasty, you probably won't want to take them off in a hurry. So if you regularly use a smartphone on your rides, then be sure to look out for ones with touch sensitive fingertips. There's also varying degrees of cushioning with some having pads positioned to align with common pressure points. However, watch out for gloves designed for flat bars. Different bits of your hands take the weight on drops and you can find that what would be a useful pad on flats becomes slightly annoying lump on drops. True, and given the huge variation in what constitutes winter, it's easy to end up with a whole bunch of slightly different gloves and the associated decision-making headache every time you want to go for a ride. Now, some people revel in having just the right bit of kit for all occasions. If that's you, then feel free to go crazy. But if you prefer to keep your gear covered under some sort of control though, then think carefully about the range of conditions that you're actually going to be riding in. Look at what you've already got and then see what's out there that will cover the rest. There's a fair chance that a single pair of gloves might do the job. One such pair that are up to scratch if it's both cold and raining are the Climb and Conquer Four Seasons glove, which, although may not be the most useful in the summer season, Tester Mike assured us that they're extremely versatile and great in the other three. And these are both windproof and waterproof, and despite not being the most bulky gloves out there, are properly capable for riding fast in near freezing temperatures. They're grippy and the long stretchy cuffs are capable of going under or over any jersey or jacket combo to seal out the weather. So Mike recommended these gloves from rides ranging from anything between freezing and the low teens. They were impressively waterproof as well as windproof and still allowed the use of computer buttons. He did have a small niggle with touchscreen fingertips not working great, but he's moaned about that in the past, so maybe he just hasn't got great fingertips. I don't know. <laughs> At £35, these are a great choice if you're looking for a single pair of gloves to suit every condition. Yeah, the first thing you'll likely notice when glove shopping is that there's a huge variety of different materials being used. You'll find the usual uh, range of wind and waterproof fabrics on offer, including Gore-Tex and other waterproof slash breathable fabrics. And much as with jackets, windproof fabrics with water resistant coatings are becoming very popular thanks to lower bulk and a softer feel. However, these can sometimes lose their potency after repeated washing. So a pair with a waterproof material are probably the better choice if you ride regularly in heavy rain. If you're planning on putting in big miles with the gloves, then look for ones with reinforced areas of heavier duty fabric at key points. That's between the thumb and forefinger on the palm at the fingertips, as this will stop them from wearing out so quickly. You may also want to look for ones with a sweat slash nose white panel, don't mix it up. And inside some form of synthetic insulating fabric is the norm, although you'll also find natural materials like merino wool and silk. Obviously only you know how wintry your winter is and only you know how much you feel the cold. If you have poor circulation then you might feel the cold in your extremities much more than others so there's no one size fits all solution at all. Our next choice are some of the warmest gloves we've ever tested. So good for the cold fingered that they will be able to sacrifice breathability for the sake of warmth. Keeping the wind out is always a good idea in winter though so in our minds windproofing is a must. Yes, well, these are great for when conditions get really, really cold, but it does unfortunately mean that things do need to get thicker. For maximum protection against the elements, then we rate the Gore Universal Thermo Gloves extremely highly. The new C5 version retains all the same characteristics as the ones we reviewed a few years ago, but unfortunately, the price has taken a slight hike up to 69.99. Uh, that is obviously Quite a sizable amount of money to drop on a pair of gloves, not the most you can. And if you do plan on heading out in uh, no matter what the weather throws at you, then these are a must for keeping your hands toasty. 
Yeah, a worthy investment. Um, Gore-Tex materials have been long synonymous for their wind-stopping credentials, and Stu found that not even the most bitter of winds, when his Garmin was reading minus six, could penetrate them, which is incredible. The thermo versions go a step further with an extra lining, which is not only very soft, but also provides impressive insulation and stays put when you take the gloves off. Uh, during testing, they were also found to be extremely waterproof, with the only entry point being the cuffs. Not a problem if you don a waterproof jacket over the top, though. The downside is that they aren't the most breathable. This means that they're best for really cold days under 5 degrees. The gloves have been impressively durable. The palm is made of a synthetic leather, which is hard wearing, and we couldn't fault the build quality. They might be expensive, but our pair have lasted us years of winter abuse. They offer plenty of grip and are a good investment for those who suffer from cold hands and still want to ride no matter what the weather. This is a good option for me. <laughs> Require some serious warmth, but don't have quite the budget for the gauze. The BioRacer One Tempest Pixel Protect gloves are a mouthful and an excellent choice for when the mercury heads south, insulating your hands from the cold and doing a great job of keeping out rain. But they also perform really well as the temperatures rise, stopping your hands from overheating and getting sweaty. Often in the winter, a ride will start off fairly chilly, but as the sun comes up, the heat also rises. This typically results in sweaty hands and having to choose between keeping your gloves on or bracing the cold. The bio racers, though, are surprisingly breathable for such a well-insulated glove, managing to wick sweat away from the skin and remaining comfortable throughout the day. Not having sweaty hands by the end of a long ride is fantastic and obviously increases the enjoyment of winter travel. Training. So Tester Adam used these gloves in the middle of winter on both long group rides and shorter training rides with temperatures down to about 2 degrees. Not enough to overcome the warmth of the Tempest slow. They've got a long cuff that saves your wrists from a draft and large reflective panels increase safety in low light conditions. So ideal for early morning starts and maybe even commutes. Well, when we reviewed the bio racers last year, we thought they were decent value at £42, but a quick Google search revealed that you can now pick them up for 35 quid from the bio racer website, making them a bit of a bargain, we say. They're also available with pink or yellow spots for anyone interested. No. I am. <laughs> yep, I'm in. Our final pick are the Velotoes waterproof gloves. I tested these last year and said that they're an excellent option for early season racing where rain, cold temperatures and bitter winds are pretty common. The slim design and stretchy material result in the exceptional dexterity they offer and feel of the bar as well. So if you ordinarily don't like wearing gloves, then these could be the ones for you. However, your hands will become very sweaty in milder weather, but I'd rather that any day than getting too cold. Yeah, uh, most neoprene gloves actually let water in and then keep your hands by basically trapping a layer of water and letting your body heat warm that water up. This provides a barrier between you and the cold. That's the theory anyway. However, the Velotoes gloves are, as the name suggests, they're waterproof and they have an added outer layer to keep the rain out. What this means is that you've got a glove that is both waterproof and windproof while still being incredibly close fitting and lightweight. How hands fare in the wet weather obviously differs from person to person massively, but I know you found the rather bold minus five degrees to 15 degrees claims to be pretty good actually, though did get very sweaty hands when riding at the upper end. Yes. It's a big range. Yeah, I mean, they do well though. Um, at £49 recommended retail price, they are quite expensive, but for racers and people looking to avoid a bulky hand feeling, then these are a great choice. Also, seeing as they kept me marginally happier in the early season races, they must work miracles as well. Very, very true. So there you have it, our top six gloves of 2021, which we think will keep fingers happy no matter what the conditions or budget. Now, if you have a favourite set of gloves that you think we've missed, then be sure to drop them in the comments below. And to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. That's all from us today. See you next time.